My greatest career achievement so far is conceiving the idea of volumetric absorptive microsampling and then um, watching essentially what was a, a concept idea um, tr be transformed into a fully fledged product. Um, so I've been very lucky to, to work with some really talented people, uh, both within what was Phenomenex, is now Neoterix, and I uh, have to uh, say a big thank you to Neil and Phil Deniff, who um, provided a lot of encouragement and enthusiasm um, throughout the, 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 the project. VAM stands for Volumetric Absorptive Microsampling, and so it's a technique for obtaining a small amount of a biological fluid. Um, it's, based, it's based upon the best bits of dry blood spot and also uh, um, low volume pipetting. So the idea behind it is that you've got a, a um, small absorptive uh, hydrophilic polymer on the end of um, what looks like a pipette tip. So the idea is that you um, uh, apply the tip at a positive angle at a um, blood pool, whether that's a finger prick or how uh, it's taken from a, an animal's tail or a child's heel. And then very rapidly, the, the, um, the blood in this case is absorbed on, onto the tip, allowed to dry. Um, it's quantitative, it either takes up 10 or 20 microliters, which solves one of the fundamental issues of DBS. Then, in very much the same way as DBS, the tips are dried, uh, or the blood on the tips are dried, and then they can be sent uh, via uh, regular mail to a laboratory, so it allows for remote sampling and then testing it at a laboratory many thousands of miles away. Within the laboratory, this is where the pipette tip comes into, into play because the tip, the, having a pipette tip means that you can have the op option to automate the product onto standard lab liquid handling systems. The uses of the technology uh, are quite wide uh, from um, drug clinical trials, monitoring those, say by monitoring the blood uh, of individuals, through to therapeutic drug monitoring, through to analysing even larger molecules such as proteins, peptides, even RNA and DNA. The limitations of the technology is based upon what it is you really want to measure and how you're going to measure it. Um, and so if one takes, for example, um, an immunosuppressive like tacrolimus, it's a perfect candidate for, uh, for volumetric absorptive microsampling because that molecule will actually partition mainly into the hematocrit and in actual fat in a hospital. It is, um, is analysed from blood, not a, from a portion of blood such as um, uh, plasma or serum. Um, so it's a perfect candidate. Um, on the flip side, if one wanted to measure um, potassium, then it wouldn't be a good candidate. And the reason for that is because um, plasma potassium um, is, uh, is, is tested quite a bit in hospitals uh, t uh, in, in, in terms of measuring electrolytes. But the body um, will pump selectively potassium into cells. But when you collect blood and you um, let that blood dry onto a metre tip or any surface like a DBS card, then um, the drying action and also the reconstitution action actually releases the contents of cells through hemolysis. And so because you've actively pumped a lot of potassium into the cell, uh, then when you've hemolysed the cell, you are emptying that cellular content, which then makes the data uninterpretable. If you've got compounds which uh, only exist in the plasma fraction, um, such as vitamin D, then you can measure vitamin D levels using BAMS or, or Mitra, but then one has to be, be aware of uh, that um, the um, plasma concentration for the same volume is always going to be higher um, for the blood concentration because the blood 
cells take up some of that volume. So one has to think about um, thinking about different reference ranges or adjusting the data to match the plasma data. So it's really where where you um, what what it is you want to do.